Good evening. Here we have a video showing you and describing how to connect up the fuel injection system for a Rover 3.9 V8. Now, as you probably know, which is why you're watching this video, you can put the later 3.9 or 4, 4.2 or 4.6 into something else. Maybe an old classic car, maybe into a kit car, or maybe you are just modernizing something you already have. Anyway, the reason I'm making this video is that I had terrible troubles finding out how to wire these up. Certain people gave certain clues, but there was no video and no clear explanation. So here I am explaining it all to you so you can get it right first time. Anyway, here we have the piece that you've probably seen on eBay. You will have bought one of these, the ECU. You might have bought it with a loom or bought that separately and all the other bits and pieces. <clears throat> but what you need to know is how to wire it all up, what is needed and what is not needed. Right, let us start with the ECU. This is the 14, hold on, let's turn it over, you can see it. There we are, 14 CUX, which is the one you're probably going to buy. Well, put that back gently. <clears throat> now, let's start at this end and show you what's involved. <clears throat> Uh, here we are. We'll start here. You will probably get this connector or something that looks very similar to it. And this is where it connects to the loom from the car or Land Rover or Range Rover or whatever you had. Now, this one wire with a blue end on it is quite hefty and it's the power wire. It runs all the time. Yes, even when the ignition is off, that runs all the time so that even when the car is parked you have power to the ECU for it to do various things and diagnostics so we will connect a power wire, a permanent power wire and it will go to this, you can probably see it, this quite hefty orange wire I think it's orange with a stripe but it's a hefty one anyway that wire takes power all the way through to the fuses the fuses split into two and they take the power into the ECU courtesy of this here solenoid relay sorry relay you can see the wires on the back now this one with the brown wires controls the ECU this one the blue one with the white wires that controls the petrol pump power so the petrol pump only works when the ECU says it's the right time and place for it to work. Now I was confused by this one. Skinny wires, in this particular case an orange relay, didn't realize that you don't need that. That's to do with the air conditioning. You don't need that. You actually don't need this one if you're doing a different fuel supply. But if you are using the ECU to control the fuel supply then you will need it. If you are using the ECU to connect and use the fuel supply, hold on, you will see on the other side of our main connector a white, once again quite heavy cable. That is the electricity to power the fuel pump when the computer says the time is right. I have not used it because this car is running a slightly different system and the fuel pump will be controlled in a different manner. Right, while we're over here, we have another plug. You don't need that one. This one, I think is a diagnostic one. You don't need to touch that. This is called the tuning wire or the tuning resistor wire, etc. They are color coded. You can see this one is blue. This is the one for the UK and some other places, and it's the one to use if you are using the O2 sensors, which I do want to do. You do not have to use them. There's a program in the box where if you remove this, it will go back to a default and you don't need to use O2 sensors. However, not a good idea. 
The whole point of running this type of system is for it to run accurately with the ECU in control because you'll get better performance, your engine will suffer less from having the wrong fuel, etc., and you'll probably get five to the gallon more, easier starting, etc. You're putting this system on for a good reason, so good idea to run the O2 sensors. What do they look like? They look like this. And they end up in this white, or was clear at one time, but now it's milky white connector. It has three prongs. There we are, there's the three prongs. It is round. Uh, obviously there's two of them, one for each side. And they will connect into this, which is attached to the main loom, which is the receiver, which is also round, also white or clear, gone a bit yellowy now, and has, of course, three connectors. That pushes into there. The computer can recognize the signal, and there we are. Right, let us look at a few other things on the engine. That little fellow connects all courtesy of the loom. That's the stepper motor and controls your idle speed. Down the left hand side of the engine, we obviously have the injector cables which just push on, four of them. And then at the front of the engine, this is all part of the loom, this sensor tells the computer the temperature of your petrol. Yes, petrol, not air, petrol. That's part of the loom, you can see it there. Just plug straight in. Around this side of the engine, and once again these are all on the loom, you can't get them the wrong way around, they're colour coded, etc. On this side of the engine, this one tells the computer the water temperature. So that one is petrol temperature, this is water temperature. Slightly forward, here, we have another control the computer reads and uh, that gives the computer the position of the throttle because as you accelerate and it moves the throttle spindle this is on the other end there's an electrical connection in there and it tells the computer whether you slow down going fast trying to overtake somebody or whatever of course on this side there are the other four injectors hold on let me walk around a bit long way to lean over here on the other side we have this O2 sensor, I've already hooked it up, the other one I'll be hooking up after I finish this video. Once again of course it's the three pin round connector. Then going over here, I can't drag it out because it's under the wing of the car, but there is this cable, it <coughs> goes on the back of the airflow meter, it's got four wires, a huge plug, you can't get it the wrong way around in theory. Now, one important thing with these looms, the computer does like them to be earthed properly. There is, hold on, I don't know if you can see it, but down here, there, that one there, there is a double, no, it's a treble earth wire, which I've put onto this bolt, so it's properly earthed. Now, back to the front because it's a long way to lean over. <coughs> Coming out of the same cable that feeds the airflow meter is a single wire. Hold on, I'll push it back. It's white. It might be white with a bit of black or it could just be dirty. <coughs> anyway, this wire will go to the negative side of your coil. There we are, negative and positive. Now, this type of system is different to the old cars that if you had a Morris Minor or something in the past, you would have had one power wire and a single wire going to your coil. Well, these are totally different. And we have two or three wires in this particular setup. So this one will go to the negative side. Luckily, you need a coil with two terminals because you then go from the negative to the negative on the distributor. The negative is the front one. That one there, you can see the little negative that I've put on. The other one is the positive, so we have positive written on the back there. So that is the end of that circuit. On the positive side of the coil, you're going to have one wire going to the back terminal, which is the positive one. 
You will also need power. Uh, in this particular case, the power I have taken from the old power to the coil, because this had an old-fashioned engine in it before. <clears throat> so that's giving you power. And then thirdly, I have taken another wire back, and that goes into there. I'll show you that in a minute. One thing I want to point out is here is another earth cable. Hefty black and black with a grey stripe. For the time being, I've put it on here while I start the engine to give it a good earth. It comes out of this protective sheath and has this plug on the end. And you might wonder what the hell that is. There are two trains of thought. One is it was to the air conditioning. Not totally sure. The other one is that it went to a control valve for pollution. Either way, you don't need it. So you can cut it off or hide it away or do what you want. Anyway, back to the main plug. As I explained before, power in, hefty orange wire. On the other side, white wire to power your fuel pump if you're going to do it that way. Now this wire, which I ran from the coil over there, this puts power in. I couldn't, I've actually cut it off there, so I didn't have a small terminal. I'm going to tidy all this up later, but I'm just demonstrating to you. So I cut it off there, uh, put a bullet connector on the end, and this gets power for the coil. The reason for that is, although the ECU has power all the time, courtesy of this, when you switch the ignition on, you give power to the coil. The power also goes through to this, through to the ECU, the computer, and the computer, in essence, knows you've switched the ignition on. If you don't run this one, it'll turn over, but nothing will happen. The injectors won't fire. You have to have power. You have to have a signal to tell the computer that you want the car to work. That's about it. Oh, hold on. There's one more connection here. Four terminals. You don't need this. Uh, it's a diagnostic for when the Rover company uh, decides to tune your car for you. You don't need that. So what do we need? We need power in. We need a signal for the computer. We may or may not need the wire going to the fuel pump if you use that system. You have your fuses. You must connect up your O2 sensors. <coughs> you need this relay with the brown wires. You also need this one with the white wires if you're going to use the computer to control the fuel pump. This one, as I said, air conditioning, you don't need it. Your tuning wire, you certainly need. Diagnostic, you leave well alone. You don't need that one. You don't need that one. You must connect the earths. You must get the coil the right way round. Negative on my coil goes to the front, negative. <clears throat> positive on my coil goes to the back, which is positive. Obviously, if you've had the engine apart like I have, you've got to make sure your ignition is set up, and when, when it's running, you can put a strobe on, etc. And of course, this signal wire was once again, without this, the computer doesn't know the engine's turning over and won't supply any petrol. There we are, I think that's covered it all. Time to have a cup of tea and uh, put the radiator in this beast. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope if you're going to fit a Rover engine with this type of ECU, I've cleared up what wires you need and where they've got to go. Okay, catch you later. Bye for now.